Hey guys, it's Kenny Rogers Rotisserie Chicken here with another crazy card trick video. You guys might recognize this little card trick as a variation of my most popular video. I have one video that has managed to cross the threshold of almost 200,000 views. Oh my, this is a little bit of a simplified variation on that particular trick that I think you guys are going to enjoy but before that you guys should check out all the links in the description and subscribe if you haven't already you guys are missing out on a lot of quality magic you, you there uh, on your computer chair you're missing out on a lot of quality magic by not subscribing so today i'm going to be using these uh inspire playing cards these alex pandrea inspire playing cards and hopefully they might inspire you to to um be be better at, at life uh so without any further interruptions uh let's let's get into the video let's get right into the um the video hey hey there you like card magic no well um Whoa, all right. I'll show you a trick anyways. Uh, so here we have a, a deck of uh, playing cards, regulation playing cards, nothing special about them. And uh, I'm gonna actually have you touch a card. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but it's actually a fairly, uh, fairly exciting process here. You're just gonna touch any card you want, but it's important that you, uh, you wash your hands before you touch any card because um, they're very expensive. So go ahead touch any card you want let's say the spectator touches this card over here we'll just put it to the side and uh, my claim to fame here is that I don't need to even see that card to be able to know what it is so I'm going to try to actually find its mates its mates are of course the other cards that match it in value and suit so in this case I'm not going to look at it but I'm going to see if I could find the mates of this card so here we go uh, all it's going to take is just a couple fancy cuts and you see I cut right to a king a little bit of a hint sees little bit of a hint another another magical cut and another magical king what how is this even happening i'll tell you what this deck isn't special at all but what is special is my ability to find kings sir look at this oh there you go the last king the king of clubs so here we have the king of clubs the king of diamonds and the king of hearts you could have truly picked any card sir but you picked a, a king here which tells me that the card over here is the the king of spades go ahead and turn it over son and of course the spectator turns it over and it's the uh um well you know uh it looks like the it's the uh it's the spade though it's the king of sp um it's the ace of spades uh that's fine we'll just uh We'll just improvise. We'll just improvise. We uh, improvise. That's magic, right? That's the point of magic, isn't it? To improvise. You didn't see that coming, huh? Did you? I know you did because I, I in the intro, I said that. Um... So that's a trick. You guys see that it's a similar version of that perplexing card trick, that Frank Garcia classic million dollar secrets. However, this one is more simplified. There's no sort of twists and turns. It's just one change and that's it. And the original, there's a bunch of stuff happening. In this one, it's more simplified and it's a little bit, a little bit easier. So it's not that complicated to do. So let's get right into the setup of this trick. You need the four aces and you need the the three kings. Yeah, look at them. I'm so excited. So that's the setup. That's all you need. You need notice that the uh, king of spades is the one that I don't have, and the ace of spades is actually going to be the uh, card that is fourth from the face of the deck so you make sure that you take the aces and the ace of spades is on top then you take the kings put it on top of that put it on top of the deck put that inside of the card box and guess what you have uh, a miracle in your hands you're waiting for a, an astonishing card trick that will blow their minds and then uh, hopefully get you something i mean we're always searching for that one person and hopefully this trick is going to be that thing that finds you that one person uh, or if it isn't, you should check out pickcake.me. It might be one of those that uh, get, gets you that person. Um, so here's the trick. You have the spectator pick a card, and you're going to force the fourth card from the top of the deck using the spread call technique. If you guys don't know what the spread call is, you should check out this video where pickcake breaks down the spread call. But case in point, you're going to spread the cards, 
and you're gonna spread cold force right there. You see that? You see how I'm you see how I'm sneaking that card out like uh like it's some sort of cat in a movie theater. But that's what's happening as I'm spreading the cards and having the spectator touch any card they want. Let's say they happen to touch this one. Notice that the ace of spades is going on top of the card they touch. So it doesn't matter what card they touch, the ace of spades is always there for the ride. That's the that's the spread call technique. So if you guys are unfamiliar with that particular trick or method, uh, up here is where you will find it uh, and learn to move. So here you're spreading the cards, you're calling. You see my dirty fingers are calling that ace of spades as I'm touching or having the spectator rather touch any card. Of course, they said they touch this one. The ace of spades is on top. So when I square it up, guess what? It's not their card that's going on the table. It's the ace of spades. It's the ace of spades. Oh boy, man. That's like half the trick done right there with just one move. So here, one more time, you're, you're calling this card. Spectator touches any card they want, square it up, put it on the table. They think it's any card, really. It's the ace of spades. And now you have the kings on top of the deck ready to be produced. So this is uh, this is the part where your creativity comes into into play because you get to determine how you find those kings. If you want, you can do a little bit of a sequence or you could just directly cut to the kings. It's up to you and your particular skill level. But for me personally, I'll just give the deck one false cut like this, then maybe cut to the king just like that. All I'm doing there is I'm swing cutting packets onto my left hand. I swing cut another packet, but put my dirty little pinky in there like it's Sarah Marshall in the fifth grade prom. Maybe I might put this packet right on top, of course, maintaining that break. Now I transfer that break to my thumb, cut at the break, and that's the first king right there. You see that? That's the first king. The next one, I might swing cut, swing cut again, but do this classic false cut. As I come to this packet, I use my dirty thumb to slip cut that card into the middle. If I want, I could swing it around like I'm um, Michael Jordan in the fifth grade prom. So it's not that hard of a little cut to do, but it does put you in position to produce that last king in a nice little flourishy way. Or you could just do that cut and go, oh look, here's the next uh, the next king. You see that? This tells me a lot about your card, sir. And of course the last king, you could do whatever sort of uh, fancy sibyl you want. You could do one-handed cut and show the spectators that you are uh, a lonely person and you show that king to the spectator. Now, of course, the perception here is that this card is gonna be the king of spades because you've claimed that you're gonna find the mates of the card before even seeing that card. You don't even need to see that card and you're gonna be able to find the mates. That's the little hot premise here. And of course, as you're saying that, you're gonna spread the cards and say, I don't even need to see the cards because I'm that good. Of course, I'm spreading over three. Notice these are the three aces and obtaining a break below those cards. Oh, oh yeah because here you're gonna use the misdirection of the spectator turning over this card to do a switch. And the misdirection is heavy, but you still have to make sure that the technique here is fine. So the technique is that as the spectator is turning over that card, all you're gonna do is you're gonna come in with these cards over here. So you're gonna come in and hit these cards against the base of your thumb. Your ring finger of your right hand is gonna pick and touch the upper right corner of these cards over here. So notice because of the break, the cards are a little bit extended there. So my ring finger is gonna come in contact with that. My thumb in the back is also contacting these bottom three cards. And I'm just gonna put pressure with my thumb, which is gonna leave those cards on top of the deck and take the bottom three aces. So at speed, it should just look like that. However, the misdirection here is that the spectator's turning over the card. So as the spectator's turning over the card, all attention is on that card. So as that happens, you switch the cards and the spectator is gonna be surprised at the fact that it is the Ace of Spades and not one of the one of the Kings. And they're gonna say, ha ha, you messed up. And you go, no, I never mess up. You anemic piece of I never mess up. Or you could possibly say, uh, wow, hey, you messed up. That's not a King. And you go, hey, uh, your mom wanted to adopt you. You know, whatever it is that it takes uh, to show the magic moment. But at the end, you've managed to uh, fix the situation and uh, magically come to a, a wonderful conclusion here. So that's that's the trick, guys. Man, you guys have a little bit of a twist ending trick there that you could take to the take to the schoolyard and show all your friends at the schoolyard. And you're going to have a wonderful little um, 
uh, it's a car trick. It's a car trick. They're not going to care. They're not going to care, to be honest. Uh, they're just going to laugh at you and be like, wow, you spent a lot of time by yourself. And you're going to say, yes, yes, I do. Ah. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go figure out different ways to use a beach towel to uh, clean my, uh, my, my kitchen.